Good morning and welcome to CSK, Christ the Servant King in Hampton, Peterborough. Whether you've been connecting with us for a long time now or whether this is your very first time, the warmest of welcomes to you. This morning, our Pioneer Associate Minister Rachel will be continuing our sermon series in Mark's Gospel. Whatever your week has been like, you can bring it to God. He loves us and accepts us no matter how broken we feel. He wants our hearts. He wants the real us. We don't have to pretend anything to him. In the Psalms, often the psalmist starts off being very raw and real with God, but through their encounter with him are brought to a place of worship. And that's my prayer for you this morning if you are feeling raw or broken, that God, through your encounter with his son Jesus, will bring you to that place of worship. Let, let's pray for that now. Heavenly Father, we pray that as we come here this morning, as we hear from your word, as we pray to you, as we celebrate the Lord's Supper, we pray that we will encounter your son Jesus. And we pray that no matter how broken or hurting we feel, that we'll be brought to that place of worshipping you in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' name. Amen. So let's commit this time to worshipping Jesus now through these words. Would you join in with the responses? God is spirit. Let us worship him in spirit and truth. The Lord is with us. Let us praise his name together. So let's do exactly that as we worship God together in song. I choose to worship. I choose to bow. Though there's pain in the offering, I lay it down. Here in the conflict, when doubts arouse, though my soul is unraveling, I choose. Yeah. 
Today's reading is from Mark chapter 10, verse 32 onwards. They were on their way up to Jerusalem, with Jesus leading the way, and the disciples were astonished, while those who followed were afraid. Again he took the twelve aside and told them what was going to happen to him. We are going up to Jerusalem, he said, and the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests and the teachers of the law. They will condemn him to death and will hand him over to the Gentiles, who will mock him and spit on him, flog him and kill him. Three days later he will rise. Then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to him. Teacher, they said, we want you to do for us whatever you ask. What do you want me to do for you? he asked. They replied, let one of us sit at your right and the other at your left in your glory. You don't know what you're asking, Jesus said. Can you drink the cup I drink or be baptised with the baptism I am baptised with? We can, they answered. Jesus said to them, you will drink the cup I drink and be baptised with the baptism I am baptised with. But to sit at my right or left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those for whom they have been prepared. When the ten heard about this, they became indignant with James and John. Jesus called them together and said, You know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and the high officials exercise authority over them? Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, I'm back in the church boiler room, probably for my sins, which are manifold, but I'm sure I can make a spiritual point out of it somewhere. In today's reading, we once again have the disciples being complete muppets, and it brings me so much comfort, I hope it brings you comfort, that you can follow Jesus and still get things wrong. These two men, although the ends of their lives were very different, followed Jesus to the end of their days. And even more importantly than them holding on to Jesus, is Jesus holding on to them, even from his amazingly kind and patient responses in this passage. He was the one that kept loving them. And I think there's a reason why Jesus didn't choose the priestly, sorry, pharisaical, I'm not pharisaical class, to be his main disciples and followers. But he chose ordinary women and men because they're the ones who knew that they mucked up, the ones who knew that they needed him. They might have been hot headed. They might have asked silly questions, but they didn't try and live their lives without him. And he's still calling those broken and crap pots wherever we might be today. So before we head into finding out what these two Muppets got up to this week, let's pray. Lord Jesus, you are the only one who gave your life as a ransom for many. But you call each of us to lay our lives down to radical obedience. And so would you teach each of us this morning what sacrifice, what surrender looks like? Would that weigh on our hearts this morning as we consider even the name of our church, Christ the Servant King, and your precious name and example, Jesus, I pray. Amen. So if we were reading Matthew's Gospel this morning, which we aren't, but if we were, he actually puts this rather cheeky question, not in the mouths of James and John, but in the mouths of their mother. Now, I don't know who it actually was, and in some ways, I think it makes it more genuine. There's always someone who's got to correct that tiny detail of the story, isn't there? And by this point, both Mark and Matthew were remembering a couple of decades back. And I reckon Mark wrote this, and then Matthew wrote, No, 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 don't you remember? The mum asked the question first. I'll put that in my account. Well, whichever it was, hot-headedness perhaps ran in the family. These are the two that, if you remember elsewhere, Jesus called Sons of Thunder, and they tried to call fire down on a village they didn't like very much. They're bat nuts. And in this, they're not very pastoral either. Both these sons or their mum would have failed vicar school. This is pastoral 101. 
Jesus has just shared his, his broken heart with them. He is going on to Jerusalem to die. He's going to be handed over to the authorities. He's going to be beaten. He's going to be killed and rise again. But before that thought is even barely dry on the page, you've got these two rushing in saying, uh, Jesus, what's in this for me? I want something out of this. Even the way they state it, they state, teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. I'm sorry, but if you came up to me and said that, I don't think my response would be, what do you want me to do for you? I think I'd be like, hold on a minute here. Let's just frame this as a question. I need to learn to love more like Jesus. So these two leapt in in the same way as if someone in your office said that they had a week to live. You, if you were asking yourself, how soon is too soon to ask if I can move into their desk? It's like that sort of scenario. They have been utterly unlistening, utterly uncompassionate, and yet Jesus returns once again with so much love and so much thought towards them. So he says, what do you want me to do for you? And then they said, well, we, this is how we see your kingdom. We want the left and right seats in your glory. And then he says, you don't know what you're asking. Can you drink the cup that I drink? Or in some translations, be baptized with the baptism I am. He responds to them in love. And of course they go, we can, because they're so sure of themselves. And then he says, well, you will actually drink that cup. But the rest is, well, a lot of questions. And that's what giving away our life is. These two men had to sign their names at the bottom of a blank piece of paper. And Jesus is still calling us to follow him that way today. We don't get to fill in the details. If he says go, we need to go. If he says do this, we need to do this. If he says stop doing this, we need to stop doing that. We have to give up our right to choose. And one of the hallmarks of power in our world, isn't it, is the right to do what I want to do, to set my own agenda, and more importantly after that, to tell others what to do. But even from this answer to James and John's question, Jesus is saying, no, actually I get to be the guardian of those decisions. Or even actually he says his father, his father is the one who is preparing those places on his left and right. So is that how you see following Jesus today, as signing your name at the bottom of a blank piece of paper? Because newsflash, he gets to fill in that contract. Now James died fairly early on. We know that he was actually a martyr before the end of the book of Acts. We don't know what happened to all the apostles. A lot we have to rely on tradition. But we know that he died for the sake of the gospel in the very earliest days of the church. John may have been the only disciple to have died of old age. But he was exiled to the island of Patmos where he wrote the Gospel of John and where he wrote his other letters and Revelation is often assigned to him. So he also suffered for his faith. But what a transformation in John's life. We can't tell so much about the transformation in James's, but we can see in a very short time at all, because ultimately by this chapter, when he's still being a son of thunder, is not very far away from the chapter involving Monday Thursday, where he is the one resting his head gently against Jesus. And that is what we're called to. That is what servanthood looks like. We certainly see at Monday Thursday, Jesus being a servant king. We we'll look forward to celebrating that and memorizing it very soon in our church calendar, even if it might look a little bit different this year. But he shows us that the one who is among us to serve is not the one who's lording it over, but the one that is bending down and washing feet. And if we want to be like him, if we want to be near him, we need to be still. We need to be the ones who've become like this son of thunder to son of quietness, resting our head against Jesus so close that we can hear his heartbeat, so close that we can feel his emotions. And the way of just thinking about in my head and summing this up is, do we have a raised head or a laid head? I hope that sticks in your head because it rhymes, sort of. If we raise our head, if we want to be seen and known, we don't want to be popular and have the world's success and the world's opinions speaking well of us. Well, we'll have our head raised above the power pit for a while. People might look at us, but very soon we'll fall again. We won't live up to people's standards of what they think power should be. Whereas if we have a laid head, we always stay close to our king. We stay low. 
And let's not kid ourselves. We might not think that we have attitudes anything like James and John. We don't have the heart to the first century disciples who were thinking it was all about warlike discipleship. Their Messiah would come as a great king of this nation to bash that nation. Well, we might not be speaking in terms of my great nation is better than your great nation quite so much anymore. But let's not kid ourselves. Our hearts are still just the same. Is it what we post on social media? We want to be known as the one with the right opinion and everyone else, you've got the wrong opinion. Do we stand in judgment over others? Do we want to gain more power so that we can make the world our way? Can we trample on others in doing that? There's nothing wrong with being in a leadership position, but what Jesus says is that a leadership position from a kingdom perspective means resting your heart, resting your head, being alongside Jesus until you can be quiet enough to know what he wants you to do. Not picking your own agenda, not choosing the things that you want to do, but leaning in, listening closely to his things. Even sitting in this boiler room and I knew I'd have to bring it in somewhere, I can feel the heat of this room rising around me. Do you have a heart that is melted towards the things of the kingdom, the things that Jesus wants? Or is it still stony? Is there still bits where you keep that pride and the power of earthly leadership? Or are you prepared to be melted into his ways? Someone much holier than I had this description of intercession. He said that intercession is when Christ's tears come out of your eyes. I know that isn't about power or not really about our passage today, but it is about being close to him. Because power doesn't look like what the world says it is. Power looks like when we listen to him, when we find out and then we go with the power of his spirit inside us. But you don't know what to do. You don't know how to lead. You don't know even what to ask the Holy Spirit for until you've rested on him in quietness. So let's be like the John of his latter years, or even, as I said, very soon after this passage, rather than the John and the James of the Sons of Thunder, who realise the one they need to be close to. So there is a call to radical servant of leadership today. Would you follow? Lord, would you take us to that place where our hearts are melted by you, that our will becomes one with your will, that our life becomes one with your life, that nothing else matters to us other than following where you say to go. Lord, would you speak to each one of us about what that looks like and call us each deep into your heart. Amen. So let's reflect in this worship song together. Now to follow me, to bring 
Lord Jesus, we thank you for the privilege of being able to pray, to know that you're God, even in the midst of all the challenges um, that we face in this moment. We thank you for the church, for the body of Christ, that you say you will build your church. You've got good things in store for Hampton Community and for Peterborough, and I thank you for the privilege of serving them. We pray for more fruitfulness and more impact and more opportunities for the people in the church to show love to people around us. And we pray for a blessing on the children and young people in the church with the return to school, for wisdom and blessing on their learning, for people to be able to catch up where they need to. We pray for blessing on mental health for the people in the church and in the community. It says in the Bible that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom and that God is close to the broken hearted. We pray for freedom from anxiety, crippling stress, fear and torment for anybody experiencing those things. Um, and we pray for strong friendships in our church environment, that new people will feel welcomed and that love will be strong amongst all of us, that we'll have real relationships um, with challenges, but that are really strong and that last for a lifetime. There'll be no lonely people in our midst because the lonely will find family in this church. We pray for faith and hope to grow. We pray for all of us to grow in our confidence in spiritual things and for us to see breakthroughs happening as we step out in faith. And we pray for the end of the coronavirus pandemic as you are bigger than this virus. You have always been and you have not, you are not even phased. You are a really good God and you give good things as we pray for things in faith. Amen. Amen. So we're now going to do the Lord's Prayer. Our, Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed be your name. name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give, give us today, today our daily bread. bread. Forgive, forgive us our sins as we, as we forgive those who sin against, against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. On the night before he died, Jesus shared a very special meal with his closest friends. At that meal, 
he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Jesus went to the cross to take the punishment for all the wrong things we have done and will ever do. He died and he rose from the dead. He defeated death so that anyone who turns to him, confessing their sin and asking for forgiveness, inviting Jesus to be their Lord and Saviour, can begin a living relationship with him. Jesus loves you so very much that he paid the ultimate price for you. Today in your homes you may have something with you to eat and drink. I'm here with bread and wine and shortly music will be played. And during that music I invite you to eat and drink and reflect and think about Jesus and all he did for you and does for you and how very much he loves you. alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What has I
what a wonderful saviour we have. Our saviour Jesus who saved us by giving his life for us on the cross. When we suffer we know that he has suffered too. He suffered for us. If we sin we know that he took our sin on the cross and we have been forgiven for it forever. Let's give thanks in prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you humbled yourself in taking the form of a servant and in obedience died on the cross for our salvation. Give us the courage to follow you and to proclaim you as Lord and King to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Well, in time-honoured fashion, it's time for some notices. Our Children and Families Ministry will be on our YouTube channel at 10.30 this morning after this service. A video for the youth will be on our YouTube channel from 5pm this evening. And we're all really looking forward to Easter, and our plans for our Easter services will be in our weekly news email coming out tomorrow. Jesus humbled himself to serve us and give his life for us, and God has lifted him up, glorified him and given him a name above all names. He deserves every breath we have. He truly deserves all our worship. So let's close our time together, giving him more of that worship and praise that he alone deserves.
You didn't think we'd forgotten your big day, did you, Sylvia? Enjoy. Thank you.